Now the fifth and final mistake is something that I feel like everybody needs to hear and it can help a ton of people. And that is, what's good everybody? I'm back with another video. And today I'm gonna show you guys five different things that you need to stop doing when you're making music. I promise you if you implement the gems that I show you in this video alone, you'll not only get your ideas out a lot quicker, you'll be a lot more efficient, and on top of that, everything will sound better and hit a lot more. So I'm gonna start it off light. Now the first thing is searching for the exact same sounds for 20 minutes. I know I preach about having a go-to folder, but there's been many instances where I've been working with people and they spend like 20 minutes trying to find the same snare, the same kick, the same spins 808. Listen, I get it, we all experience it, we all go through it, we're all creatures of habit. We go to what's most comfortable to us. I don't know if you notice, but if you continue to make the same thing over and over again, you're eventually gonna hit a wall. But also, if you try to spend too much time trying to go through all of these different folders and subfolders to find different sounds, you're eventually gonna get tired and you're gonna get bored of the idea. So here's two alternatives that you can use. The first alternative is XO by XLN Audio. I always rant and rave about this plugin because it always helps me find new sounds that I didn't even know I had. XO is basically this program that like spreads all your sounds in this galaxy and all you have to do is like touch the little stars and then like a sound comes out. Doing this has helped me a ton because instead of going through all of these different folders, I'm just clicking a different star and then a random sound pops out and whatever excites my ear, I'm choosing that one. It is on Splice's Rent to Own for Low, but I'm gonna give you guys a free alternative. One that I also use is called ADSR Sample Manager. Basically same concept, you throw all your sounds in here, just type in 808 and it'll bring up all the 808s in your library. Simple, don't say I didn't plug you. <laughs> so the second thing you need to stop doing is mixing over leveling. I see it time and time again, too many people feel like they gotta put all these plugins and all of these like EQs and compressors and reverbs and try to do all of this little like intricate shit just to make it sound good. When in all reality, what you need to do is focus more on leveling and making sure you have the feeling of the overall track. Think about it like this. When we buy Arturia, Omnisphere, Electra X, there's people that take hours, days, weeks, months, their whole living just to make sounds and make them sound good and ready and out the box. They already come with effects, they already come with compressors, they already come with EQs and reverbs and stuff. Really what you should be focusing on is the feeling that it gives you. Unless you're doing something experimental or you know the sound that you want, you don't really need to throw all of these plugins. This leveling is good. So I'm gonna show you guys two different beats that I used in some of the splice shorts. As you can see from the channel rack, all my drum sounds aren't even in the mixer. All of them are leveled right here. I leveled them based off feeling alone. I didn't throw EQs or anything on my drums because they already hit, they already sound good. All I gotta do is turn them up. I did use a splice sample, but let me break down the other elements in it. There's nothing in the mixer, straight raw, straight out the VST. Now if I go to the other sound, I know I wanted that dirty tape feeling, so I just used a tape emulation machine. Simple as that. Like there's no crazy effects on here. I did do a breakdown on this on my YouTube channel. So if you want a full beat breakdown, go to my YouTube channel. But all my drums, they're not even in the mixer. I put the spins eight away and the kick in there, but nothing crazy. The only sound that's in the mixer is the hi-hat just because I got effect tricks for some texture. It's just that little bit of like dirtiness to it. Even on the sample, I have a free VST, halftime, and EQ. So moral of the story, keep it simple. Leveling is more important. Damn, I need a drink for that one. I'm trying to get on my healthy wave. I'm drinking like shakes and shit. Mistake number three that I see far too often is out of key 808s. I know everybody talks about this, but I'm gonna show you guys what I do, my secret sauce, just something that I've been doing for a couple years now that's always helped me out and I just wanna be able to like give it to you guys because maybe it can help you guys out because I'm tired of hearing out of key 808s. 
I'm gonna find a quick sample. I like this. Sick. One of the most common ways people find the bass notes is they put it in Edison, they hit the tech pitch regions, they hit the wrench tool, and then they hit convert to score, and then the notes are right there. But as you can see, not all the notes are there. There's a couple that are missing. One of the things that I like to do is I like to highlight it, go to my master channel, and pull up this plugin called Melodyne. Then I'll hit transfer, and then just press play. And then it tells me the notes. It also tells me what chords were used too. So I'll save that MIDI, then I'll mute Melodyne, I'll drag it in, and then boom, those are my notes right there. They're usually all the way at the bottom, so you just bring them up a couple octaves. Now I'm just using one of my 808s, and I'm just gonna show you guys how easy it is to come up with the pattern now that you have the bass notes. Use this for good only. Do not try to steal other people's shit because they will take everything from you. It's happened before, trust me. It's just a good guideline so that way you're not out of key. And also it can help you make some counter melodies because you have the notes too. Melodyne is not free. I had to pay for it so, you know. You could also do this in Edison, but if you wanna get Melodyne, you know, go cash out. <laughs> it's so crazy, I put people onto this like years and years ago. And the fact that they still use it to this day, is super dope. I know there's some musicians that's like, Oh, you're cheating. You're not developing your ear. But listen, this is just how I do things. It's just giving me certain results. And you know, it works for me. It's all about being efficient. I already know the bass notes of a sample without using Melodyne. I just use this because sometimes people warp samples differently. And sometimes I second guess myself when I'm just like, I need to get this idea out faster. So the fourth mistake is having too many sounds and melodies going on at once. We already know what too much sounds like. So I'm gonna pull up this project file and show you guys something that I feel like is open enough for anybody to get on. That's what it sounds like before. I feel like that sounds good because there's not a lot going on. There's one, two, three, four, five sounds. So this is what it sounds like. I'm gonna go back a little bit so it leads into it. As you can see, there's not a lot going on with the drums and it works well with the groove of the bass. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six drum sounds is what I use. You don't gotta go like too crazy with it. Now the fifth and final mistake is something that I feel like everybody needs to hear and it can help a ton of people. And that is terrible sound selection. When it comes to sound selection, it could really make or break your track because if you have like a fire melody, but then you have like these like terrible quality sounding drums, it's not gonna sound good at all. No matter how many EQs and compressors you put on there, it's not gonna sound good. And vice versa, if you have terrible sound selection with the melodies, but you have good drums, it's not really gonna save it. So let me break down the sound selection in this project file. I have this piano. Sounds good, sounds full. This pad that I printed in the background, it actually comes from this VST, Matrix 12V from Arturia. This sound. It just gives it a more angelic effect 
to what's going on with the chords and the pad. Next, I use these vocals, but I tuck them like really low in the background. And to support that pad to give it like a little bit more texture, I use this preset from Matrix 12. And I think I adjusted like the attack and release a little bit. The bass that I use, this is actually from Hybrid. And I believe I tweaked the filters. All of the sounds you use sound very good together in unison. So that's really what you want. You want something that all together, it sounds good. It might not sound great individually, but all together, it all serves a purpose and it sounds good. Developing your ear and getting good sound selection takes time, but here's two things you could do to speed up that process. One, go to Splice and download stems. You can literally find stems on Splice and study them, like learn things from the stems. I really like any producer on the internet because a lot of producers are selling samples and they have stems with them. So what I would do after I make beats out of those samples is I would study those stems I would like take things from them. They have a low piano and a high piano to create this sound. I'm gonna try that next time. Oh, they use a perk loop and they put a ton of filters on it to create movement. Bet, I'm gonna try that the next time I make samples. Literally learn from them. The second thing you could do is study songs. There's a ton of songs on all these playlists, all these billboard records that have fire sound selection. So study those songs, go to Google, try to find any breakdown you can, any information you can about those songs watch deconstructed videos, watch breakdowns, whatever, and implement that stuff. Those are all proven formulas that work. So that's the end of the video. I hope you guys got a lot of gems from this video. Man, my voice is hoarse from giving you guys like all of this information, but I just wanna see you guys win. Let me know what else you guys wanna see in the comments down below, and I do my best to make it happen on Spice's YouTube channel. So with that being said, I'm gonna go make myself some tea. I'm gonna catch you guys next time.